Okay, we recite <coughs> together. <coughs> May we be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to us. May we always meet the spiritual success. May we also have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems and failures in life. May we always rise above all of them with morality, integrity, forgiveness, compassion, mindfulness and wisdom. May my parents be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May they always meet with spiritual success. May they also have patience, courage, understanding and determination. <coughs> Problems and failures in life. May they always rise above them with morality, integrity, forgiveness, compassion, mindfulness and wisdom. May my teachers be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May they always meet with spiritual success. May they also have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties problems and failures in life. May they always rise above them with morality, integrity, forgiveness, compassion, mindfulness and wisdom. May my relatives be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May they always meet with spiritual success. May they also have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems and failures in life. May they always rise above them with morality, integrity, forgiveness, compassion, mindfulness and wisdom. May my friends be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May they always meet with spiritual success. May they also have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems and failures in life. May they always rise above them with morality, integrity, forgiveness, compassion, mindfulness and wisdom. May my in, all indifferent persons be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May they always meet with spiritual success. May they also have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems and failures in life. May they always rise above them with morality, integrity, forgiveness, compassion, mindfulness and wisdom. May all in unfriendly persons be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May they always meet with spiritual success. May they also have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, failures in life. May they always rise above them with morality, integrity, forgiveness, compassion, mindfulness and wisdom. May all living beings be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May they always meet with spiritual success May they also have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems and failures in life. May they always rise above them with morality, integrity, forgiveness, compassion, mindfulness and wisdom.
<clears throat> These are very beautiful, meaningful, friendly thoughts that we have to cultivate within ourselves <clears throat> with very honest, sincere wish. These are the thoughts that, these are the words that eventually turn out to be our friendly thoughts. When we keep thinking, then we begin to feel friendliness within ourselves. These are the three levels. First we repeat words, then we think about them, and then eventually we feel Whatever words we repeat again and again, that becomes a habit. So habitually we utter words as we normally do. Whatever we think, <clears throat> that becomes a habit. So we think that way always because it has sunk into our subconscious mind and naturally those are the thoughts that surface in our mind very often. And then in reality we begin to feel what we think and that is even more powerful conditioning that we all has, have <coughs> developed all our life. And these are the words, thoughts and feelings eventually help us to gain deeper concentration as the Buddha has mentioned in the Sutta describing the benefit of metta practice. There he mentioned one of the benefits as tuatang chittang samadhyati, mind gains concentration quickly. Naturally, when the mind is free from remorse, free from resentment, free from agitation, irritation, mind becomes very smooth, calm, relaxed and peaceful, we gain concentration. Friends, these are very natural steps, nothing artificial in it. One step leads to the next. And that's a very logical, dhammic sequence. For this reason, we recite these words at the beginning of our meditation. Whether we practice mindfulness or with personal meditation or tranquility or concentration meditation, both <clears throat> equally require calm, relaxed, peaceful state to gain deeper concentration and deeper insight. Without any hesitation, therefore, we must recite these words to ourselves. We all know that while by, by reciting these words, the world will not be peaceful, world will not be happy, world will not be free from afflictions, but those who recite them, those who think of them, those who feel this benefit, 
will definitely experience a degree of peace, solace, comfort. They are the ones who can relax. They are the ones who experience peace. They are the ones who gain concentration. If million people practice, there will be million peaceful people, happy people, relaxed people, people with concentration. These are very practical advices that Buddha has given very mindfully with deep insight and wisdom. This is why we suggest that every one of us must cultivate these thoughts without any hesitation for our own benefit and for the benefit of everyone around us. Just feel that everyone sitting here in this hall this morning is our friend. Those who are sitting behind us, those who are sitting on in front of us, those who are sitting on either side of us, all of them are our friends. We are their friends. When we all are in friendly atmosphere, we all feel friendliness. We all feel secure and safe. We experience protection from each other and we give protection to each other. This also very definite benefit. We generate friendly vibration in our mind and when friendly vibration we spread around us, and other people's friendly vibration we absorb, our friendly vibration they absorb. So we exchange friendliness without uttering a word, without saying anything to each other. By sitting in one place, honestly, sincerely we practice metta, friendliness, compassion. We appreciate each other's success, achievement, peace, and we remain equanimous in various situations that sometimes are very deep and profound. No words can express this equanimous feeling. Beginning with metta, we practice compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. This is a very rich experience we all will have, <clears throat> especially in the practice of jhana, this kind of atmosphere, meditative environment, is extremely important. One of the thrust and main point in jhana practice is gaining concentration. So we prepare the background for that kind of achievement, concentration. With this background, let us begin our other part of our practice. Take few deep breaths to notice the sensation of breathing. Inhale slowly, mindfully, and be fully aware of inhaling breath. Exhale slowly, mindfully, and be aware of exhaling breath. 
So focus the mind exclusively on the feeling, sensation of the breath. Some of you may feel the touch of breath at the tip of their nose. Some may notice the touch of breath on the rims of their nostrils. Some may experience the breath touching the upper lips. Some of you may experience the breath touching inside the nose between eyes. This variation depends on the formation of nose. So each and every one of us must breathe separately several times to find out the place where the breath touches and then focus the mind there. Some of you might have experienced the breath, the secondary function of breath, that is rising and falling of the abdomen. But to make the abdomen rise and fall, breath must go through the nose, and therefore the tip of the nose, nostrils, upper lip, or inside the nose are the first point where the breath touches. Consequently, you experience rising and falling of the abdomen. So some people may not find it easy to become aware of the touch of first touch of breath in nasal area. They can feel the breath in the abdomen when the abdomen rises and falls, especially when, because of our <coughs> wearing of our clothes, belts and so forth, we feel the tightness, pressure, in we, when we breathe in and out. The first point is subtle, First beginning of the touch of breath is subtle, therefore they may not be able to find it. But secondary point, the rising and falling becomes more conspicuous, and they can feel that it doesn't actually matter where you focus the mind on, so long as you experience the touch of breath. to focus the mind on. Let the breath be your anchor for the mind to return whenever the mind wanders away. And keep bringing mind back to the breath. The best way to do is to relax, not to blame yourself for wandering mind. Don't blame yourself, don't be harsh on yourself. Be as gentle, kind and friendly to yourself as possible. And let the wandering mind return to friendly feelings within yourself. With that friendly feeling, you breathe in and out. If the breath turns out to be short, be aware of short inhaling and short exhaling. And then you can notice the beginning, middle and end of each inhaling, 
the beginning, middle and end of each exhaling. That also happens very naturally. Every inhaling breath has a beginning, middle and end. And after a very brief pause, exhaling begins. Notice the beginning of exhaling, middle of exhaling, and end of exhaling, and a brief pause. This simply means when you start breathing in, the breath touches a certain point that as I mentioned earlier, either in nasal area or abdomen. <clears throat> From that point till the lungs are full, breath continuously flows into the lungs. That whole stretch of inhale is the middle of or the body of inhaling breath. When the lungs are full to the tip of your nostrils, entire breathing apparatus is filled with air, then inhaling cuts off. Notice that. And immediately you experience a degree of pressure in your lung area. And then a brief after brief pause, exhaling begins. Notice that. Then the breath continues to flow out through the nostrils. That whole stretch of out breath is the middle of exhaling. When there is no more air in your lungs, exhaling stops, and after a very brief pause, inhaling begins. These are very natural events of breathing in and out. There's nothing artificial, nothing we do deliberately, but this is the very natural process of breathing. All we have to do is just to breathe and become fully aware of this process, events, moments of breathing. Also you will notice when the lungs are full there is a degree of pressure which is not very comfortable. As we breathe out, that pressure is slowly released, giving us a degree of relief. But when there is no more air in our lungs after breathing out, we experience a very minute degree of anxiety of not having breath in our lungs. As we breathe in, that anxiety fades away, giving us a relief of anxiety. This also is very natural occurrence. We don't do it deliberately. What we deliberately do is becoming aware of whatever is happening. Paying total undivided attention without verbalizing, conceptualizing, or labeling. Words, concept, labels conceals the truth. We don't want to hide the truth. We want to see it, experience it without any middle agent like labels, names, concepts.
when you do that <coughs> you naturally relax your mind becomes calm peaceful sometimes you may fall asleep but don't be succumb to sleepiness sleep sleepiness will not bring you an iota of insight to gain insight we must make awake alert and mindful so with firm determination stay awake don't let the mind wander however because of the nature of our mind it wanders away when it happens don't agitate get agitated excited or upset blame yourself but simply be aware of the very nature of our mind and this is how very steady calm relaxed people take care of wandering mind understanding the truth the nature of the mind is very important part of our practice understanding is the key the main factor of the normal eightfold path so everything follows very smoothly from understanding relax be calm and see exactly what is happening seeing here means just becoming aware of what is happening wandering mind you cannot see with eyes open as you keep your eyes closed you become fully aware of wandering mind so figuratively we call it seeing literally it simply means becoming aware of what is happening as the mind unites with the breath mind also becomes very much like breath free from greed hatred and delusion breath is such a wonderful object of meditation which has no prejudice which doesn't belong to any particular ethnic groups geographical area or religion or culture or place it is universal all living bring living beings breathe all animate and inanimate things breathe there's a universal rhythm that keeps everything alive and we follow this rhythm this energy this power this prana the life which is so pure and simple clean and peaceful the mind we make our mind united with such a peaceful calm 
pure, universal factor and stay with it. The moment you try to label or verbalize, you create ripples, create you disturb this peaceful unity of mind and the breath. Metta is wonderful auxiliary factor for this combination of peaceful breath with peaceful mind. All these three unite together. As I said, there is nothing artificial, no imagination, visualizing, fantasizing, but natural occurrence. All we do is becoming fully aware of what is happening. This is what I call pre-conceptual awareness or non-conceptual awareness. This is not a word. Tranquility is not a word. Calmness is not a word. Friendliness is not a word. Joy, appreciative joy, equanimity, compassion are not words. They all are experiences. So we try to stay with this experience without disturbing it with labels and words and concepts and ideas, only to explain this reality we use words, but to experience them we don't need words. We just experience it. With these few suggestions, I like to stop talking. So you sit as long as you can, and slowly and mindfully, without disturbing others, whenever you want to get up and walk, you may walk in the adjacent room or in the basement walking area. May not be advisable to walk here and slowly walk there as long as you can. And then come back. So in, in another session I demonstrate our walking meditation. Let this session be sitting and walking in your own way, as you have learned before. So let me stop talking, and you see what I, the, you see the truth of what I said so far.